when it all goes quiet and I stop trying to fill all the spaces I remember I hear a still small voice from the one I know calling me home when it all goes quiet Bună bărți să am. Vader, ons even eens baie dankie vir u van middag lieve Heer. Ons is so in skuld by u ten opzichte van die goedheid en gins. Maar u soek niks van ons af nie. Behalwe ons leven, ons hart, ons denken, ons alles. Soos wat het was voor die sonde. En u nooi ons uit om saam aan tafel te kom sit. Maar u gee ook vir ons die leiding, die beginsels, wat ons bedet om gereed te wees. Lei ons verder, in Jesus naam. Amen. Blijf samen op my page with me to the book of John, chapter 14, Johannes 14, en wel vers 1, tot 4, John chapter 14, verses 1, 2, 3, and 4. Let not your heart be troubled. He believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions If it were not so, I would not have told you I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, ye know, and the way ye know. This is invitation, not from Jesus himself, but from the heart of the Father to reunite with his wayward child once again. I'm reading. To his church, Christ has given ample facilities that he may receive a large revenue of glory from his redeemed purchased possession. The church, being endowed with the righteousness of Christ, is his dispository in which the wealth of his mercy, the wealth of his love, the wealth of his grace is to appear in full and final display. What a privilege that was bestowed upon us as a movement, as I already mentioned, our four spiritual forefathers and mothers. He is forever one with Christ, and the Father is a marvel to the heavenly host, and it is the great joy. The gift of his Holy Spirit, rich, full, and abundance to be to, be to his church, as an encompassment wall of fire, which the power of hell shall not prevail against. There is the wall of protection, which um, David has spoken this morning, to protect us. In the unattained purity and spotless perfection, Christ looks upon his people as the reward of all his suffering, his humiliation, and his love, and the supplement of his glory. Christ, the great center from which radiance all glory, blessed are they which are called to, be to the marriage supper of the Lord. Count yourself blessed. The world is blessed. 
to be invited to the Lord's, the Lord's Supper, the marriage supper. The reason why the bridegroom delays is because he is long-suffering to us who are not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And we need to repent on a daily basis. Because John the, Revel the Revelator makes it clear in the book of Revelation, we shall overcome. But Satan will come again with something else and we shall overcome just as Christ had overcame the world. Every case had been decided for life or death while Jesus had been ministering in the sanctuary. Friends, we know by now the marriage of the Lamb was consummated. We know by now in 1844, in October, what transpired. We know the history. In this early writings 280, paragraph 1, every case has been decided for life or death. And my question is, who have decided this? Did God decide it? No. Each and every one of us have made our mind up. And as I'm speaking right now, we know about this. The investigative judgment is on right now. Christ, the Messiah, the bridegroom, went in the most holy place to prepare his people for the marriage. He had done, he invited us, he had came to earth in order to, to show us the way to the Father. At the appointed time, there is an appointed time, there is a Moedim, on which one we don't know, I don't want to speculate. At that appointed time, the bridegroom come, not to the earth as the people expected, but to the ancient of days in heaven. And the question is, who is the Ancient of Days? Page with me to the book of Daniel, chapter 8, and we read verse 14. Daniel, chapter 8. Verse 14. And he said unto me, unto two thousand... 300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Let's go to Daniel 7 verse 13. Daniel 7 verse 13. And I saw in the night vision, behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Who is the Ancient of Days? Is his Father. In John chapter 1, verse 11. Let's go there, John chapter 1. I'm not going to read all verses due to time constraints. John chapter 1. And we read verse 11. To 13, John chapter 1, 11 to 13. Come unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, in them gave he power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man but of God. He came to his own, and we know his own didn't want to receive him. This text is only, you can just jot it down if you want to, or I can give it to you, just to show that God has a people, God has a messenger on earth, and the word in Hebrew, his own, there is the word. 
This is what I'm not going to try to pronounce it, but in plural it means his own people. All who wait for the heavenly bridegroom are present, represented in the parable of slumbering because the Lord delay his coming. We know that parable in the book of Matthew. All have slumbered and slept. All of them. We were all asleep. But praise God, there were five who awake. We are in the waiting time. Let your loins be girded about. And we have heard this morning how to gird our loins. And your light shining that may, that may wait for the Lord when they return from the wedding. That when he comes, he knocks. You may open unto him immediately. Friends, when we read in the book of Revelation chapter 3 verse 20, I'm standing at the door, at the door, and knock. When you know the history of our church, you will see there are specific times when the Lord Jesus Christ knocked at our heart's door, even up until now. 1844, 1888, 1903, and I can go on and on. Even up until today, he is knocking at our heart's door. When you read the book of Revelation, the message, the three angels' messages, or the message to Laodicea is directly pointed to the leadership of our church. The Bible is clear. To the angels of the church, the people will accept the message. They are eager to accept, but the leadership constrains them. The Father is knocking at the leadership's door. Friends, to open up so that we can carry on and go to the Lord's Supper. We cannot be ready to meet the Lord by walking, by waking when the cry is heard. Behold the bridegroom and then get it up our empty lambs to have them replenished. We cannot. We must be ready forever. When the shofar is blowing, we must be ready at all times. We must be ready. Probation and probation end when least expected. When is that? When probation ends, it will come suddenly. It will come unexpectedly at a time when we are at least expecting it. But, and this is important, this but, not the previous part, but this. But we have a clean record in heaven today and know that God accepts us and finally if faithful, we shall be gathered into the kingdom of heaven. Do we want to be there? Oh, friends, let us be ready and stay ready. Let me just read one verse. Revelation chapter 19, verse 7. 19, verse 7 and 9. Revelation chapter 19, verse 7, 8 and 9. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he said unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lord. He said unto them, These are the true sayings of the Lord. Friends, we should count ourselves blessed. When the work of the investigative judgment is closed, the destiny of all will have been decided for life or death. Probation is ended and short time before the appearing of the Lord in the clouds of heaven. GC 490. The door is still open. The door is still on a jar. Probation is not yet over. There is still time for us. And I'm, look, I'm looking forward for the Nicodemus in our churches, even on conference level, level, DC level, and division level, when they will stand up and say, 
we should get ready because the Lord is about to come. There will be a revival. There will be a revival. They will be awakened by the Spirit of the Lord. I saw angels hurrying to and fro in heaven, and angels with the right of import by sight returned from the earth and reported to Jesus that his work was done and the saints were numbered and sealed. Oh, friends, we are living in the antitypical day of atonement where we should get rid of sin, to get rid of malice and anything in our life, to get ready to be sealed by the Spirit of the Father and His Son so that we can be moved, as Paul say, constrained and moved by the love of God. Not by man, not by money, but by the love of for souls, we are called to do that, friends. And we know by heart the contending issue will be the Sabbath, and not just the seven-day Sabbath, also the feastly Sabbath will be a contention. The Sabbath will be a great test of loyalty, for it is the point of truth especially converted. When the final test shall be brought to bear upon man. Then the line of distinction will be drawn between those who serve God and those who serve Him not. For 120 years, Noah preached there will be a flood and they didn't believe Him. Even those who perished in that flood were once in the ark, building the ark, in, uh, giving warning messages to people around them, but they were getting weak and tired and they fell back. But even then, for 120 years, Noah proclaimed the righteous message of love. Come, come. And yet they didn't listen to the call of the sentinel of God. In the book, G.C., Great Controversy, the righteous and the wicked will still be living upon the earth in the mortal state. Men will be planting and building and eating and drinking, all unconscious that the final irrevocable decision has been pronounced in the century above. And we as a church, so to say, I don't want to boast, but we as a church is the only church who preach this message about the century, and not just a pie in the sky, it's a reality, because Moses saw the blueprint and he built it for us to be read in the Bible. Our God is about to come, and the question, are we ready to warn people all around us? They will say also to us, as they did when you read the spirit of prophecy, they say that Noah was a madman. Rain? What is that? We haven't seen it. But when they saw, as the spirit of prophecy describes it, a cloud dark like, some, like a man's hand coming closer and closer, friends. When you read that account and the first drop starts to fall, what is this? Now we believe forever too late. God has shut the door. Noah and his family wanted to open it, but they couldn't. They couldn't. A door, as John the Revelator explained, when God shuts a door, no one can open. When he opens a door, no one can shut. Friends, I'm about to end off. I've got more 30 slides here, but due to time constraints. There is no second probation. There is no second probation as some other churches are preaching in the form of the rapture. And there will be a seven-year period of peace and then the Lord will come. There is no second probation. There is not a second probation for anyone. Now is the probationary time. Now, before the angel shall fall her golden wings, the angel of mercy and shall step down from the throne. Mercy, mercy is gone forever. 
Not, not just that God has stopped mercy, we have stopped mercy by our decisions, our ways, our thinking, our way, how we behave, what we read, what we, what we look at, our behavior. Ellen White makes it clear that the Father emptied heaven and Paul and the writers of the Bible put it this way, God emptied heaven and in order for, for him to get poor so that we can become rich, rich in his goodness, and his mercy, his love. But when we look in our country, our republic, when we look at our continent, no love for one another. The destiny of all will be decided. A few, yes, only a few of the vast number who, who people, who the pe people of the earth will be saved unto life eternal. While the masses, who have not perfected their souls in obeying the truth, will be appointed to the second death. Our Savior, save the purchase of thy blood, is the cry of my anguished heart. Ellen White loved her church. She loved the people. She loved the people. Even when you read... Um, Books on her experience and her life you will come across early in the morning when everybody is asleep. You can hear her voice and she was preaching very hard, in a sense loud, so that the Lord can strengthen the pastors, the evangelists, the people, the brethren within the church, so that they can come right and repent of their sin. She has a love for the work of God and for a church. Although she was mishandled, abused, gossip about, and backstabbed, she still loves them. Even to a point when they send their, her to, to Australia. The Lord didn't show me anything or told me anything to go, but she went. She went. And look at the work in Australia today. To the U.S. lost, to the Australians gain. I end off with this quote, friends, in five testimonies to the church, volume five. What we make of ourselves in probationary time, yet we must remain to all eternity. Death bring the solution to the body but make no change in the character. The coming of Christ does not change our character. It only fix them beyond all change. When you take butter and mud and put it down out in the sun, both of them will have a different experience one will melt, the other will harden. What do you say? Like Ezekiel said, Father, please, remove the stony heart of mine. Remove it and give me a heart of flesh to be in touch with your people's pain, to be in touch with the grief of the world. Give me a heart of flesh. Our Father loves us dearly. Amen and amen. Let's pray. Father in heaven, please help us, Lord, on our way, our journey. We have trouble of times lying ahead, Lord. Things are not looking good. But you have promised that you will be with us every step of the way. Please help us to get acquainted with you. This is my humble prayer in your son's name. Amen and amen. And I stop trying to fill all the spaces I remember I hear a still small voice from the one I know calling me home 
and it all goes quiet. I hear your love calling me. I hear your love calling me. Nothing sounds as sweet.